Hi, in this video we'll continue our discussion on gene-specific regulation. And up till now we've been talking mostly about how individual genes are regulated. Now we'll go up a level in the hierarchy and talk about circuits of genes, in particular three different types of circuits, positive feedback, a toggle switch, and a feed-forward loop, and see how clusters of genes are regulated. We'll talk a little bit about epigenetic regulation, which is a mechanism we haven't discussed previously. And lastly, we will talk about experimental methods for studying gene circuits, both uh, DNA sequences and DNA binding proteins. We've discussed negative feedback uh, two times already in this class, and that was those were examples of shutting things down when there's too much of a certain material. In here, we're going to look at a positive feedback loop, and this is thought of as a memory device in a sense, and that means that if you, what we're going to see is if you make a little of protein A, you will continue to make it. So that's where the memory comes in. Now, in the initial cell, we're not making protein A because um, it doesn't have the activator protein that it needs to make protein A, which is protein A itself. It's an auto activator. That means a positive feedback loop. Something is going to occur, which we will not specify right now. A transient signal, a mistake, somehow a little of A gets made. And as A gets made, it binds to its own promoter. And now you've got a steady stream of the production of protein A. Even after cell division, we're both cells getting uh, parts of protein A uh, that will continue to make protein A because it will continue to bind. So both cells inherit some protein A. Both cells will inherit the state where the gene is turned on uh, and continue to make it. So uh, a very simple one element circuit, but nevertheless it starts to um, control genes in, in different ways. On this slide we see perhaps the single most famous genetic, synthetic genetic circuit that has been created. And it was in fact created here in 1999 by Jim Collins and Tim Gardner. And this is called a genetic toggle switch. And this is one of the very few um, circuits that have established the entire field of synthetic biology. So this is really landmark work done here at Boston University. Now I first need to describe uh, how most of the genes have been regulated by activators, and then we'll talk about a toggle switch. I guess it's easier to start with a toggle switch. Think of a light switch on a wall. To turn the light on, you flip the switch once, and then you walk away. As long as that switch is up, the light is on. Whenever you want to turn the light switch off, you go over to the wall and flip the switch, and then the light is off. In contrast, most of the examples that we've been giving in biology is would be the, that you go over to the light switch, you flip the switch to turn the light on, and then you stand there and hold your thumb on the switch for as long as you want the light on, applying continual pr pressure on it. And for cells, that can work. But think about how much simpler drugs could be if you could incorporate toggle switches. A person who takes, has high blood pressure has to continually take blood pressure medication every day to maintain their blood pressure. What if it were, you were possible to design a toggle switch such that you took a drug once, the circuit switched and put it into a low blood pressure state, and that was it? Well, the drug companies might make less money, but if they could do that, they will. And, and people are trying very hard. Now let's talk about the details of the toggle switch. The first thing we have to realize is that there are two states, basically. And that is, either promoter 1 will be active and make the, this protein, or promoter 2 will be active and make this protein. The reason that a toggle switch is, it, let's, let's say for example, you're make, promoter 2 is active. It's going to make two proteins, repressor 1 and a reporter protein, which is a green fluorescent protein. The repressor 1 will come over and sit down at promoter 1, repressing it. So promoter 1 will be always shut off. 
So we don't have to do anything to promote else to Promoter 2. Promoter 2 is always going to be making Repressor 1 and the Reporter gene, and you're going to have constant fluorescence. But now let's throw the switch. Let's throw in a molecule that's going to interfere with the Repressor 1 activity. Now, Promoter 1 is free to make Repressor 2. Repressor 2 will make the protein and turn off, bind to this promoter, turning it off, and you blocking expression here at Repressor 1. And so you've got a stable situation where Promoter 1 is going to keep working because now you're no longer making Repressor 1. Promoter 1 is free to continue to um, bind RNA polymerase and make Repressor 2, keeping this situation um, stable, whereas Promoter 2 is turned off. The way you would switch it is by introducing inducer molecule number 2, which interferes with Repressor 2 transiently. It's just a pulse of inducer 2. Transiently repress, uh, interfere with this. Now Promoter 2 starts firing, and Repressor 1 is going to kick it in action. So this toggle switch has two stable states, either Repressor 2 is being made or Repressor 1 is being made. It's switchable between the two by adding, just in a pulse, for a brief period of time, an inducer molecule, either inducer 1 or inducer 2, and this has been shown to, be, to work in bacteria, yeast, and mammals. This simple but elegant demonstration of what is possible uh, has really excited many, many researchers all over the world and has, as I mentioned, started the field of synthetic biology. The third type of circuit I want to talk about is a feed-forward loop, and that is the case where you make protein A, protein A makes protein B, and together protein A and protein B will make protein Z. So, got to emphasize that you only make Z if A and B are needed. So, why would you want to complicate your life uh, this way? Uh, well, th a feed-forward loop is, in a sense, a safety mechanism uh, to ensure that you only make Z when you really intend to. Imagine uh, protein Z is a toxic molecule or something that has disastrous effects and you only want to turn it on. Uh, for a certain time. Well, think about the situation where you have a spurious input and you make protein A for a very short amount of time. But since it's a spurious input, it doesn't persist in time. It only lasts, doesn't last a long time. It just lasts a short time. Well, let's look what happened. What will happen? Protein A will make some of protein B, but the input is off, so you're going to stop making protein A. Now you've made a little, so it's not going to hang around, it, and it takes some time to make protein B. You're making protein B, it's going to bind to um, gene Z, but again, A is gone by now because it was just a transient input. I'm going to erase some of these marks so that we can talk about the other input status. Okay, now I'm going to talk about a sustained input where protein A is made for a long period of time. So A is made for a long period of time. It's going to make protein B. It's hanging out, hanging out. Meanwhile, B is mRNA is getting made. Protein is going to be made. And now you have protein B and protein A. Together, they will make Z. And you can see the time course. It's low, low, low for a while. A has already started. I'm going to try and draw that straight. So A has already started. Finally, you start making some B and B starts accumulating and so Z gets made in increasing amount. When you stop the input, you stop making A, but some protein A is around which will decay over time and the Z will decay over time. The, Im the really important thing is a transient input, which could be a mistake, uh, only making a little bit of A, it's not going to hang around long enough and be present long enough that by the time you make B RNA and B protein, A is gone, and so you won't have both of them around to make gene product Z. Now we make the jump from circuits to epigenetics, and I think we'll, this is a good place to pause. We'll resume in the next video. Thanks.